Merry Christmas! Happy holidays, everybody! Yay! Yay! Merry Christmas! It's a Christmas miracle. We have a special episode today because Shane's still in house. Still here. Still here. It's almost like we pre-recorded this. No, no, no. <laughs> no, he got snowed in. It's Christmas. Snowed in. It is Christmas. This I mean, magical I think Rob hat brought some presents. Mm, so Shane, we'll right Rob, <laughs> we talked about how you guys got into the industry, right? And it took some of you a lot longer to get in than others. How would you, like, what kind of advice would you give to somebody, like a kid that's like, I want to make video games one day, or I want to translate video games, or even somebody that's going through a midlife crisis that's like, man, I have wasted my life working for the stop man. It. <laughs> stop here! Not me, working for the man. <laughs> I want to do something in the gaming industry. Like, how, how, what kind of advice would you guys have for somebody like that? Okay, so I'll go first. Uh, my experience is a little bit limited compared to yours, but... Based on my perspective, I've talked about previously how important unity is. And for those of the uninitiated, unity like is... human a, beings as a whole? The like, middleware is software. Okay. <laughs> That's but also, so the human space. unity as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yes, all of us working together, this right. unity, That's this, is how, this is how we make games, right? Okay. Right, right, right? No. So there's middleware software called <laughs> Unity that allows you to build a game. I can use art, create like sprites, have them move around. I don't have to write that from scratch. In the old days, back when we were kids, oh my gosh, I had to literally, everything. like, and I, and I have done this, Andrew Lamoth has a series of books on how to write like pixels and backgrounds and have them move and interact and intersect. I went through like a that. whole summer camp for a couple of years learning how to program mm -hmm. at Transit. Oof. Oof. What monster sends their child to a summer camp of I specifically asked for it. What no, monster? She <laughs> she signed, monster decides to sign up. I decided I did not I want to do this. But for the see, that's the thing. It takes a certain type of brain, and I'm, does. I'm one it of does. these brains where, yes, I like technical stuff, but yes, I also like to be creative. So, every like when I was taking computer science classes at the University of Kentucky and learning C and C plus plus, every time I learn a function, it's like, ooh, I can put this into a game. So I literally made a text-based RPG with, and you should have seen how excited I got when I learned you how to do random numbers it into your TI. I can program to the TI. Uh, I remember. Yeah, we all made. Have like an RPG that even our producer made Mega Man. We all made. We all made like Zork on our TI eighty one graphing calculator. Yep, yep. I can afford that. I can only afford a TI thirty four. Black drug dealer, drug pusher, high school teacher, drug war. Wars. Drug Wars. Drug Wars. Yeah. What kid didn't have that what? in algebra class? You didn't play Drug Wars? Wow. No, yeah, just, no. We, 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 played we, it in we did life. a whole RPG with our high school teachers and stuff, and Dr. Pepper was our potion to heal up oh. and stuff. It was That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, like, programming is what, like, the typical pre previous way that you had to do this with Unity and Unreal Engine and Game Maker Studio. You don't necessarily need a programming like degree or language or understand it. Like it literally at this point is drag and drop. Like if I want something to do, interact or jump this high or have this much velocity or gravity, or whatever, I can just go in and change in the IDE, the integrated interface, and go in and change these things. Like so, you don't have to be a programmer to make games now. So that really helps people like my brother who doesn't have necessarily the programming game. Shouts out to Justin Fox. Uh, black simulator you should go buy it like he doesn't have to know like programming he just has to be able to create the content and he knows art he knows music like he can do this so he can use something like the rpg maker and yeah he can use rpg maker that was the first thing he did so when he was a kid and this is again talking about how unity and unreal engine and all this middleware is so valuable back in the day on the playstation one was a game called rpg maker and you can load up a memory card with like you know text and characters and things like that my brother had a stack of memory cards. I think you come over and see I, I played I played one of his games back on the yeah, PS1. Yeah, back on the PS1. Maker. And it's, it was amazing the things that he could do and how fast he could input and things like that because he had the environment. He didn't need to learn how to program. He had the tools to do that. Well, they also had the Eurose, right? The, yeah, the yeah, Eurose. Yeah. And even, even and things like... Um, Devil Dice came from that? Was it Devil, Devil Dice? Was one of the Devil Dice. Of, I think it was Devil Dice. Yeah, that was the one game that the, came from... Yeah, there were a few other games that started out It was there. a pretty much... It was a blue... I don't know if you know it was or a, not. It was a blue PlayStation that was like a programmer's mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. PlayStation. You can program games with it. It was like seven hundred bucks. I really insane. wanted one. I but really I wanted think one. Every kid that dreamed of making video games wanted one. Yeah. I never knew anybody that had one. Though. Yeah, I never had one. But like that back that that device back then, you had to be a programmer in order to get something to a right. screen. You uh, could not just like you know download a middleware yeah, it, and have it, a yeah, go. Yeah, it wasn't like a graphical interface where you didn't have to ever really see the code. Because mm -hmm. like Unity, you really don't have to see the code. No, you don't have to see. Unity. You can make a full game without yeah. actually wow, writing a full crazy. line of code. It's yeah. crazy. So yeah. what kind of games have been made in Unity then? Oh, tons. I Have mean, you ever like, heard of a game called um, Stardew Valley? Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley <laughs> yes. was it? That wasn't Unity. That was. Mm, I think that was actually maybe his own. He rolled his own. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but like, not you know, Undertale is an obvious example of a right. great game. 
Actually, Undertale's not Unity. No, Undertale's made in Game, Game, Game Maker, Maker. which yeah. is much simpler yeah. and easier. You guys Unity. suck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Unity is used in lots and lots but, and but lots. Of okay, I okay, definitely yeah, know nice. one. The Messenger, which is a fantastic Ninja Guy. Right, right. Like, yeah, yeah, that's made in. But Unity. there's also a lot of 3D games made in Unity. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, trust me. Like I manage lots of indies who use Unity. Probably half of my accounts use Unity. Um, and because you manage the indie accounts now, right? Yeah. For at Sony. And I'd say you know overall in the last ten years, like game development has been democratized to an amazing extent. Like, it used to be very hard to do that, now it's much easier. But I think it's not just that. I think every aspect of the gaming industry has become democratized. Even like what we're doing right now, what you do, being able to like create content and share it and have people like it and Engage, better. engage with an audience. <laughs> like, subscribe, share. Engage with an audience, <laughs> and you know that used to be impossible, right? Mm -hmm. Now that's possible. Or like, if you're good at one thing, say you're good at making chiptune music, right? Like our friend Tumelo. Yep. Or maybe you're good at making. Shout out to Matt. Shout out to Matt. Matt. Up, Matt? Or maybe Tumelo. you're good at making pixel art, or maybe you're good at making three D art, or maybe you're good at one thing. Bullshitting people. Bullshitting people. Translate, <laughs> translate, <laughs> translating into Trans what? Translating yeah, back and forth. How many, how many fan translations have turned into real jobs and real things? Right. Yeah, no kidding. Or, you know, our, I have friends that work for big localization houses and they hire freelancers all the time to work on projects. Or even mm -hmm. like, I have a friend who, you know, I met them as a cosplayer in my booth. Um, they were cosplaying El Shaddai characters and years later, El Shaddai. There's this, there it is. Years, <laughs> years later, this same cosplayer got hired by Konami to be the official writing cosplayer at the, like, the Smithsonian for an event, right? Got paid mm -hmm. to cosplay, right? Right? Wow. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. I mean, Assassin's Creed has their official cosplayers to, yep. like, yeah, at events, at a Comic Con. Events, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's other things you don't even think about, like, you know, marketing, PR, you know. There's there's lots of jobs in the gaming. The guys industry. that draw the, the guys who draw the covers. But I don't, this is a small time. Uh, well, that's manga a artist. A a I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this little <laughs> well, manga called Dragon, Dragon Ball. Doctor Slump. Out, and the artist who did a lot of the redesign and rework for Spyro was actually a fan artist. Right. Who, I heard for, about that. For what? Yeah. For Spyro. For Spyro oh, Spyro, the, the new, yeah, the the new the Spyro, movies. or the remake, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Or even writing, like writing for games. Like, you know, some of the writers, they might have started out not in games, or maybe in fa in, like, in writing fan fiction. That kind of, it, it does happen. I mean, mm -hmm. like, you know, so like, I'd say if, you, if you're really into some aspect of games and you think you have something to share. I do. Keep honing your craft, keep doing it, and you know, obviously, social media makes it a lot easier to find other like-minded people. You make a network of friends, you, you know, and you just keep trying and get better at it, and maybe eventually you get lucky like me and Rob, but I think it's gotten easier. It's gotten easier. It's gotten easier to, to, to like get discovered. One of okay, the things- Okay, well, you, hold on a second. You, you say it's gotten easier. There's a but lot more But don't you think people. that there is a lot more competition though? Yeah. Because everybody now, it, uh, and, I'm, and I mean this, like everybody says it's easier to break it into comic books now, and I'm sure it is, because of deviant art and things like that, but if you go to a comic book convention, the way it used to be is like, hey, uh, Mr. Editor at Marvel or Mr. Editor at Dark Horse, here's my art, check it out. There was a huge line of guys. Now it's everybody on the internet that's like has some capability of drawing is like, I can be a comic book artist. I can send my stuff in. Now the competition is has gone from this huge line of waiting at a comic book convention but to a gigantic yeah. like, holy shit, everybody is, and, and not everybody's an artist, not everybody's a YouTube channel. Uh, <laughs> but you know, you know what I'm saying. I figured the competition has gotten big too. Well, so listen, listen, my that thoughts on small this. guys that actually might get lost. So somewhere. we made the joke about unity. Like honestly, I really think that doing things together is the way to do this because there are conventions all over the states. Like in Columbus, they have like. Uh, retro gaming shows mm -hmm. and conventions. Even here, we have things where yeah. people get together. We have like Run Jump Dev here yeah. in Lexington. So what you do is you get like-minded people because there's always exactly what you said. I didn't know there were so many roles in gaming until like, you know, I sat down at a publisher house and like, oh my gosh, all these people, it takes all these steps. Mm -hmm. People to talk to voice talent, people to do motion capture, people to do writing and production. Like if you're good with numbers and schedules, you can get a job. Oh yeah, produ game. production. Yeah, it's like production. Keep, keeping the things running. Yeah, yeah like, 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 like you forget how important things are until you like you have a producer. Yeah. So anyway, so you can go to these conventions and you could find a group of people, like-minded people, working together with things and that's how you can hone your crap but working together makes something better and it makes it more noticeable rob's right like it is harder <laughs> i've just, never heard that on the show if you jesus <laughs> christ that's the first time yeah, like, if, right. if you have a group of, like shut up and <laughs> rob's always right i'll say some of the games that i got to, to manage at playstation have been things that were kickstarters where it was like two or three people working together a thing they really believed in maybe it took four years right. maybe they had now we got kickstarter maybe they, yeah there's kickstarter there's indiegogo there's uh, patreon yeah, yeah there's patreon 
I mean, there's so many. Like, I, I support multiple Patreons. Well, even but you know, but then but then again, that goes back to my thing of like now you have competition because a Kickstarter, right? Like the guy that's making the little princess side scroller game for his daughter, right? That started mm -hmm. as a Kickstarter. That guy is competing against the guy that made Castlevania. But what you do, right? You, you just support so, both, <laughs> right? No, no, no. But I'm saying. You have somebody like that, right, that has never made a video game, and then you have the guy that made Castlevania. Okay, listen, let me tell you what, this is, let and, me tell you what you did. that's competition. When things, it yes, it is competition, but when... This had, a, I think it was a Kickstarter as well. Mm -hmm. Was it? it? I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, my daughters yeah, know everything yeah, about Undertale. Like, we can raise them down. For, yeah, uh, we can raise them down. But the thing is, and this is actually a really good example, too, it doesn't matter. Because if you have passion for something, you find some people to help you out with the program, with the art, with the music, whatever. If you have a good idea, you have a good, good idea, product. it will weave through the shed, the chaff. It will and there's a lot of crap out there. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say crap. It's not a lot of crap. It's no, a lot of things I, where... I will go ahead and say... Uh, Shane's like, job is to weed out... No, 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 no. What it is, is there's a lot of there's things where... There's a lot where, of stuff out there that's not finalized, not finished, or not a good product to sell. This is true. There are some things that are weak, but there are also some things where people are trying to do more than what they're... Like, your brain can do certain things well and some things it can't. This is why I say go to conventions, get on the internet, get on social media, Twitter, Make whatever. Friends. Make friends to help you because if I find... For example, Matt Hopkins... Too Mellow is a perfect example. He has been making music for a long time and he's great at it, but how did he get his start, right? And he's gone and done these things with like, you know, the people who did 2064. They needed a great musician. Now, those guys could have made their own music themselves. They'd probably been okay, but they found a guy who could do exactly what they need. So if you go in and get help from people who are experts in their industry and they're like, you know, in their decree, then that's gonna help you get okay. noticed. Right. In that aspect, I think things are easier to connect with people. Yeah. You've got Twitter, you've got Instagram, whatever. You have access to message these people like, hey, I'm an I need, artist. I need to do pixel art. Like, and I don't even want to be your friend or anything. I just want, you know, some advice. Because <laughs> here I am in, in this point in my life. Whereas before, I guess in the past, you would have to just sit or go to a convention and stalk somebody and be like, wait, 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 wait. I've got some art to show you. I know you're going to go to the bathroom, but give me five minutes. I mean, it, but you know, in, in, in a way, I would say like the video game industry has turned into a little bit more of what the comics industry was like when we were growing up. Because remember, you go to the comic shop and there was Marvel DC, but there were all these other imprints of right. like indie comics, other things that like were more on the fringe. Mm -hmm. And it used to be for video games, the gatekeepers made it to where like, you know, there were no indie NES yeah. or Sega Genesis games, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were like unlicensed, like Comerica or whatever, you know, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But in, man, in, general, in general, oh, you, gosh. Like, let's talk about at games now. Yeah, let's talk about uh, <laughs> no, Wisdom, no. Wisdom Tree. Wisdom Tree. Um, yep. oh, but like, yep, yep. you know, it used to be a closed Rainbow. place. Vi console video games were a closed secret garden. And like, now it's not. There are thousands of indie games on all the platforms. It really feels like it is. And yes, you're, there is more competition, but that's that's the you know the the other side of democratization. If you you know if you start letting people do things, well then people are going to do things, and you're going to have more competition. And you can't just complain. Well, all these other people get to make games too. I don't sound like that. That's exactly <laughs> what you sound like. Yeah, the accent perfectly. And so like you know you were talking about the Vita earlier being this platform that really allowed indie gamers to shine to submit an an indie a Vita game. I didn't have to go through. I didn't have to be Konami being an official publisher. I could pay like my couple of bucks to Sony. Fill out all the chart, fill out all, this is where your production guy comes in, fill out the form correctly, yeah. make sure I submit I mean, everything, and I have a game we, appear on the actual store. Like, to digitally publish a game on Vita for indies, there was no upfront cost for them. Mm -hmm. Like, we would loan them hardware and mm -hmm. stuff. Wait, wait, so, wait, wait, like, wait. Like, so th they would reach out to you and be like, hey, I got this game. We would for we'd sign them up. They, you know, there's a process you go through of like proposing your game, submitting your game. To, you know, has to make it through our, our QA process. Okay. The game comes out digitally. But like, yeah, there's no, there's no point where What's they the have What's the QA? To, did make, you make sure it doesn't like oh, crash no. the no, system. We, did you put money in my pocket? <laughs> well, that, well that, no, that's a, that's a thing that when you play a console game, or any of these consoles, there is a stringent quality assurance process where people play your game to make sure it adheres to our guidelines and doesn't break and doesn't crash and doesn't. Do the icons, icons, the company that allowed out the black was it Black Tiger? What was that? Yeah, yeah Rath, like, Rath the Black Tiger. It was, uh, I, don't look, I don't manage that game. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm not talking about that. But like for example, like, Adventure it, Time game, the, the the dungeon one that is really really bad. It has a lot of bugs. But yeah, it's fine. But see, like what you were talking about, these things that you don't understand until like you see it firsthand. Like when you talk about QA, it's like, okay, when I push the home button on my system, does the right iconography show up? Does it show like gotcha. an Xbox okay. A button or a PlayStation cross button? Like things like that. If you like unplug the like, controller, what happens? Yeah, what happens? That kind of stuff. Yeah, things you don't think about. Like you, I would have never thought right. about that until like yeah. we had to deal with it. Well, and I'll say like a lot of the, the indies, when it comes time for that, that is the part that they're scared of. And maybe they have to resubmit and stuff, but it's not, you know, it's, it's not hard. The platform holders will work with you. Right. Okay. And, you know, putting your game on a console versus putting it on PC, like, 
you know, there are fewer games on console than on PC. So you do have a better chance of finding an audience, I think, on console mm-hmm. if you're just some little indie guy making a game. Uh, but there, in- there have been really good stories, though, of independent guys like making it in there. Like uh, the guys that make Super Meat Boy. Oh, yeah. Meat Boy, yeah. And uh, Fez. I mean, well, the guy that made Fez, was, he was he, he's back, he's, five, he's back, six years. He's right? back in games. I worked with Phil Fish. We worked with yeah. him on Super Hypercube for PSVR. Or like my time at PlayStation. You know, my biggest success has been Rocket League. Rocket League. That is, you know, the reason Rocket League wow. exists is because of Shane Benhausen. Not thing. exactly, but those guys have made a smaller game on, <laughs> hey, PS, man, no, on PS3. You can't be that humble. It's but of that me. was a little game that became a very big game, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I think yeah. that like to see that kind of success happen to really good people, like the dude, the main dude there is Ionix. He was the first person to ever, he, he used to make mods for Unreal. He put like a vehicle in an Unreal tournament mod. He basically mm-hmm. put the first vehicle in a shooter. And if you think about that, it all yeah. kind of makes sense that like he would go on to make Rocket League. Hmm. But like I think yeah, that's the Undertale games like Undertale and Rocket League. I think are very inspiring because it shows that like you know if you have a good idea and you're willing to see it through and polish it and make it the thing you wanted to make. Yep, Bri- like PUBG and Brandon Green is yeah, a perfect example. Thing. Like he was making mods. He was working on Arma or whatever. Yeah. He had the idea. Oh, I think I have the best idea for Battle Royale, and he did it. You and, know, and that's so. the thing. We talked about the the death of. Um, magazines in the last episode mm. when you were here, um, and I think now it's because well now we have the internet right now That's we true. have everybody Destructoid, isn't every it? YouTube channel, including this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we haven't done video game movies, but you know everybody has a voice. Everybody has a voice. The game is out. The game is out, and the reviews are out. You no longer have to wait a month to get EGM's you know score. Right. No. Oh, <laughs> wow. True. Wow, Assassin's Creed sucked. Good thing I didn't buy that game. We the same game here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's everybody has a voice, and yeah. now YouTube. So that, that is a way to kind of get into the air in into the field too. Is having review shows. And then the, like, I was Twitch. Tra- there, there's all these. So I will say, yeah, so on videos. the publishing side, on the publishing side, it is like it used to be like publishers were totally focused on getting like review copies to gaming magazines so they can get oh, the reviews. Like, influ- yeah, it's all, all influencers, influ- right? Influ- now, that is not the case. We are looking at streamers. Yeah. We are looking at IGN. We are looking at like, you know, these guys that, that exactly the, the exact audience that you're talking about because they are engaged with the audience. Our little YouTube channel, we are engaged with our people. Think about your big Twitch streamers and things like that. We mm-hmm. want, because if I get- Because it, you want to build up hype for a game when it's released, like well, uh, and, and Fallout you want- 75. Six. Authentic hype, not hey, we're flying you in your review crew out to our spa. Yeah, that's, that's, that'll you know what I'm saying? That'll never work. Like now you have authentic reviews, right? right? Yeah, so well, I mean, yeah, I'm sure some people still get free video games, but you know what I'm saying? It well, feels, you have well, your, shows, your big streamers, you absolutely send free it, video games. Well, I'm saying too. it feels more honest, though. Like well, the smaller channels. And I think, right. and you can tell these days, you, you know, if you're a savvy viewer, you can kind of decide if you think this person is being honest with you or not. If they really This episode the game. is brought to you by Spider-Man. Today I'm reviewing Spider-Man. <laughs> right. Yeah, as much as I love those little print reviews, there wasn't always a lot of context, uh, and you didn't really know if the person really had played the game necessarily. Right. Right. You know, I think in a way, those old days of the lead times of magazines, and you didn't really know if you trusted the review. I think it's actually better now, as much as we, you know, we miss the old true. magazines. And, but like, and there's still some reviews, like on like on these big popular websites, where like, oh, so and so, I didn't play the been game. Fed to them. Yeah, it, either they're, the, they're hitting all the main points of the game. Or they're, they're reading the press release. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Reading press release, or they didn't actually play the game. But like, oh, they're just going to put on anything. Yeah. That still happens. But in general, like if I go online and I could see like you know these websites review things, or I could see streamers playing the game, like okay, he's probably not getting paid. To play this game, he probably just wants to play it because he, he enjoys the game. Yeah. Like again, influencers is like the best way to get reach contact with. So that's another way into the industry is playing games, having your own person, Done. having your own Check. voice. Well, also, <laughs> like, the idea of the, playing a game for an audience. Yeah. Oh, the idea of like mind. monetizing your fandom too. I think that is kind of a new thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That like if you're really into something, say you're like the biggest Kingdom Hearts nerd in the world, and you like have an you amazing Kingdom Hearts website. I, I, you know, I like, did cosplay as Roxas, so yeah. You know. Right. Like you might be. Able able to yeah monetize your fandom by like making things for other people or like you know becoming an influencer or maybe even sometimes getting hired by the company to help promote the game like like I, I know I, that that happens I know? always have these questions about these things will you talk about this sh- uh, and it's every fucking time dance on in an episode but <laughs> where that that also lies into the copyright category right like you, you can monetize things from Kingdom Hearts but what happens if Squaresoft's like that's hey, true you're yeah. making keyblades well, we they, have they shut that down. on that. Right. Yeah, they had any time season to season, season assist, yeah. right? Yeah. But anyway, that's a Dan it's, episode. It's a that's a Dan episode. Gray, Sorry. Great area that game companies, I think, unlike the music industry that went a different route, they kind of say, I think this 
lends more money to us in the long run, and so we're gonna. Well, yeah, I think it depends on how small it is too. But anyway, that, that's right. Like, yeah, if, if you're selling it like on Amazon, yeah, you're probably gonna get yeah. in trouble. But because if you're there, like, there are people that make money, like say, but going back to our topic though, like video games, Dragon Quest. There are fan art people that set up at shows that like you know yep. draw these things, poster size of the character, and the obviously shirts. we have licensed property that we deal with. And they're like people who make their own masks of things too, right? Yeah. Pinhead? But, like, um, no. Come on, dude. You know what, Jason? <laughs> get out of here. But like, there's people that make their own masks, but they're not doing huge productions. So right. like, in general, they haven't been shut down. But yeah. Right. Yeah. If I if I whittle my own Sora figurine, you're not gonna call Square. I will. You know? I will. Now no, you're. No, no one's gonna, gonna be like snitch. that, Falco. Uh, you, you oh can wait, sell it Tina's the snitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, Tina. Yeah. No, it's my own stuff. I'm like, <laughs> screw you guys. So so l let me conclude, if I may. Let me conclude this. By all means. The best way to get into the industry, like how do you get into the industry? The big thing, because we've talked about like minutia, but the real big thing is, it's all about passion. Actually, do it. Make a game, even if it's a little, little teeny tiny game. It doesn't have to be a great game. Make something. That way, you are in all con all aspects of the game. Make the music. Make the art. Make do the production schedule. Do the programming. Put something out, even if it's on PC or whatever that you have. Again, we've talked about Unity and Unreal and Game Maker Studio, which Game Maker Studio is probably the best one to start with because it's very, very, very easy. Like, And I shouldn't say like it's easy and crappy because again, Undertale was made with Game Maker. There's a bunch of other cool games too. Hotline Miami was made with Game Maker <gasps> yeah. as well. Yeah. So make a game. Be passionate. Express your passion. If you want to do on the other side of the game process Stop where being you're playing. Stop a consumer and actually do something. Yeah, like, like do it. Like you make a YouTube channel and when you're doing your YouTube channel or you're doing your podcast and you know something about the topic, let it come out in your voice. Yeah. Like talk about it, be yeah. about it, passion. So make a game if you want to do a game thing. Do your art if you want to do an art thing. When you do, if you like music, make music, make albums, put stuff out. Cause then when you want to go to a bigger publisher or something like that, I can say, hey, here are these five tracks I made for yes. Streets of Rage. Or here's this game, because that person is going to look at that and go, okay, this guy made a game. He went through all the pains of making a game. This guy made an album. He made music. He did art. He yeah. did this, or she did this, excuse me. I don't mean he or she. They no, did this. Right. They did this. They went through it. They loved enough. They cared enough. And they have something to show for it. We can trust them. You're completely right. Because that passion, like, especially if you're willing to grind on it without having success and to keep doing it until, you know, like, to show that you're in it for the right reasons. Yeah. Also, to go back to something you might have said the last one like the idea is if you meet other like-minded people who have different skills don't be afraid to like Voltron up and try to do something together <laughs> maybe it doesn't work maybe they are not the right people but maybe they are and sometimes having another person or two people with you helps propel everybody to, to work harder try harder think differently so yeah I, I'd say just like you know you only, you know this is your life this is your chance if you love games if you're passionate and you think you have a chance of doing it you should try it. You should it. try it. And also, it is okay to suck. Because your first bit of pixel art is going to suck. Your first bit of music is going to suck. Your first game is going to suck. Second one, make it better. Yeah. Third one, make it your better. First, first one, make couple it of years on YouTube is going to suck. First going to suck. <laughs> you can go back and watch your but, first episode. But again, like exactly what it's you're like, talking yes. about. The pilot of that <laughs> Simpsons. Anyone who has met me has known that I've been playing games hardcore hacking system when I was in six when I was six years old I was making my own Pac-Man and Donkey Kong and Hubert games I was and, playing with corn husk with <laughs> <laughs> so it makes sense that this is the industry that I it took a while but it took it makes sense that I'm in this industry same thing with you you can tell stories of how you were a kid doing gaming like things it makes sense that passion will come through and to put you where you need to it is funny how many people I know in gaming who at some point in their life were like drawing Mega Man levels on graph paper yep. mm -hmm. you know it's yeah. just like a yep. thing you did it's a thing you did maybe, yeah. right? yep. so so passion Find people, talk to people, because how you got in was someone that you knew. How I got in was someone that I knew. That's, that's but it wasn't just that. It was like, you know, that. It that was passion plus. It was passion networking. plus the yeah. networking, yeah. actually. Because yeah. it wasn't they wrote just. songs about that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I guess that's it. Passion and, passion and try your heart, try networking. And these days it's a lot easier than 20 years ago, really. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah. there you go. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> You guys want to make Secret of Evermore 2, right? That's what I'm hearing? Like, <sighs> <I guess. laughs> what? Just, 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 just stop. Okay.